Hi, my name is Coach Jimmy, and we are talking about good enough. Is good enough good enough? And I have a lot, a his, like a lot, like a like a big history of settling for good enough. You see, before I got in business, almost nine years ago, I found myself as a three-time college dropout. I was a hundred pounds overweight, drowning in over sixty thousand dollars in debt, and living back at home with my parents. That obviously wasn't good enough. And in order to get out of that, in order to do that to where I've lost 100 pounds, I've kept it off for going on 10 years, building a seven-figure online business, bringing my wife home from her job, living debt-free and living a life of really freedom to be able to spend time to do videos like this and train from the comfort of my home here in Dallas, Texas, it took me changing my standards. It took me changing my work ethic. Because I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but where you try something and you put some effort in and you get close. So this morning I got up, I am not a runner, but by, by, I will tell you that. Yes, I've lost 100 pounds. Yes, fitness is in my DNA now and it's an important part of my day, but I don't like to run. And for whatever reason this morning I got up, you know, I get up super early at, at 4.30, 4.40 in the morning. I was in the gym by 5.30. I was, you know, warmed up, getting my mind right, listening to something to really, you know, feed my mind and my spirit. And today was going to be shoulder day and I was going to go big, like shoulder, I haven't had a good strong shoulder day in a while and decided to do body beast uh, bulk shoulders, one of my favorite routines. I mean, it's just a rocker. And I got to the end of that and I knew I wanted to do some business training today. I'd seen um, that Gary Vaynerchuk's Ask Gary V show yesterday's episode was about how to gain followers on Snapchat. I'm spending a lot of time on Snapchat right now. If you're not following me, I'm the Coach Jimmy on Snapchat. I have a ton of tips that I've already laid down this morning. And so I was like, well, I want to watch that video. Well, I'll be proactive. And so I was like, I'll go upstairs and jump on the treadmill, the treadmill, and I'll actually run. It was funny because I went up there and I thought, oh, I'll just put it on the incline and walk and cool down and watch this thing. And I got up there and there were like three chicks, not walking on the treadmill, not trotting on the treadmill. These chicks were running. And I was like, game on, chicks. Let's go. And there's something about that, right? Surrounding yourself with a pusher. Surrounding yourself with somebody else that's like, my bar is here. I am not concerned about hurting your feelings if you want to walk on this thing. I'm not concerned if you want to like play safe and play small. This chick was going. And I was like, shit, I got to go. So she was already like rocking and rolling. And I, you know, so I, I grabbed my phone. I popped up the episode that I wanted to watch. And there was no like, I'm going to walk for two minutes. I was like, go. And so <laughs> I cranked that puppy and I started running. And like I said, running's not my bag. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to watch this and I'm going to knock out two miles. Two miles at the end of after a very like strenuous lift seemed pretty good to me. That seemed pretty solid. So I am trucking along because I don't want these chicas, you know, to think, you know, I didn't want them judging me or thinking, oh, this guy's, you know, playing soft or he can't keep up with us. And, you know, that, that ego pops in there, right? You surround yourself with pushers and you surround yourself with doers. You better hope your ego pops into play big. Because you're worth it, right? Like you're worth it to go play big with them. Now, whether or not you, I can run as long as they can or I can play up to their level, I don't know. But I will tell you, I had a better run today because of those chicks up there that were blowing and going than I would have if I had gone up there by myself and allowed myself to just walk at a four miles an hour on a 15% incline that like I got a better workout in. And so I was getting to, I was getting towards the end of the run right? And it was taking taking me a little longer to get my two miles than I thought. Because I was like, oh, you know, I'll go up here and I will do, I'll run for 20 minutes. And it was taking me a little longer than that to get to this two mile because I, 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 did, I did stop. I was doing some intervals in the middle. And the video that I was watching while I was running ended. And it was, it was almost to the 20 minute mark, but I hadn't passed the two mile mark. And I was like, well, I got 20 minutes and that's good enough. And like right in that moment, when that thought went through my head, because I thought, look, I've already been up since 4.45. I've already listened to something that's feeding my mind and my spirit. I'd already lifted a lot of heavy weights. And I had run for 20 minutes while doing business training on a treadmill. 
if I kick off this thing before I technically get to two miles, would you know? No, because you weren't up with me this morning. Would anybody know? Would anybody know that was really my goal was to run two miles before I got off? It would have been so easy to just go, no, nope, 20 minutes, good sweat, done. And in that moment, I had to like physically, aggressively grab that thought, slam dunk that mofo and say, nah, -uh. I set a goal. Good enough isn't good enough right here. Close enough isn't close enough. And I wanna use insanity as an example. I don't know if you've ever done that program and maybe that's how you know me, that I, I had the privilege Gosh, going on six years ago now of being a cast member in that program. And what I find with any, any kind of Sean T workout is, and when I'm doing insanity with people, and I'm just as guilty, and let me know if you've done insanity, put in the comments and let me know if this has been you, right? Let's say power knees, right? Boom, 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 boom. And you're going and you're going and you're going. He's like, faster, go as hard as you can. Go as hard as you can. And then right towards the end, Sean starts a countdown. Right? Five, four, so let me know, is this you? Go, 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 go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, next move. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Go, 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 go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, where's the power jumps? You cheated yourself. You cheated yourself right at the end of that move. You cheated because you were prepping for the next. I'm gonna save a little energy here because I know those power jumps are coming next. I know that next move is coming next, right? Think of a sprinter going across the finish line. And if you have people on your shoulder, you've seen it time and time again, that person that lets up right before they cross the finish line and somebody else flies past them, right? The, somebody else flies past them because they get right at the end, right at that little bit, instead of, you see like the really good sprinters, right? They speed up and dive forward, right? It's that, that boom, right? It's the pow, I'm gonna finish this thing and I'm gonna get across it. So something I had to do in insanity, which is also bled over into every other piece of my life, was to go a second beyond, right? Boom, 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 five, four, three, two, one, plus one, go. And finish strong, right? So think about that in like other areas of your life. Where else in your life have you gone good enough on that email, good enough on that blog post, good enough putting together that social media post, or good enough you didn't make that one more phone call to that prospect, you didn't follow up with that 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 one more person because you're like, oh, it's five, I, this was good enough today. And you're wondering why your business, or your endeavor, or your goal, or whatever it is you're trying to achieve hasn't come to fruition yet. I'm telling you, it's in the details. It's in the good enough. I'm gonna go back and use another Sean story. Two more Sean stories, in fact. God bless Sean T in my life. <clears throat> I was on a Beachbody cruise, and we were, uh, Sean T was on the cruise, and we were doing insanity outside. This was probably, it was five years ago. My son was just born. Five years ago, and Sean was doing insanity out on a basketball deck on the top of the, top of the cruise, or the top of the boat. And I'm in the audience, right? And, and I felt like it was, as a cast member, as Sean's friend, I felt like it was my job in the audience to bring as much energy as possible. And we were doing high knees. So for those of you not familiar with the program, um, which you can find that on my website, thecoachjimmy.com, you can learn all about that in my experience with insanity. We were doing high knees, right? So like you're running, your knees are coming up at least waist level and you're twisting, boom, boom, boom. And Sean picks that up and picks that up and picks that up. And he looks at me, you know, and if any of you have ever worked out with Sean T, what he will do is he's like, um, do you see the Jungle Book? I compare him to Sheer Khan. He's that tiger, right? He'll come off the stage and start coming through the crowd and you get really nervous because you don't want him to like call you out for slacking, specifically if he knows you personally. And I'm just going with these high knees and he comes and taps me and says, go on stage. I like, keep this going. <clears throat> I'm going to go out here. Well, holy cow, the performer in me was like, yes, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to kick all these people's ass. Let's go. And I jump on stage and I throw these high knees into turbo drive. Like I, I've never done high knees higher or faster in my life, right? And Sean's out there counting it down and I finish. I finish strong and I see Sean coming up. So I assume 
look, I'm going to give everything I can up here because Sean's going to come tap me on the shoulder and I'm going to be able to go back down to the audience and slack off the next move a little bit. And like, I'm going to, I'm going to overexert here so I can slack down there. And he comes back on stage and I go to leave and he, he, he goes, uh, uh, he's like one minute power jumps, go. And he started the cadence. It was like, go, 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 go. Well, I had emptied my tank on the high knees. So I'm in panic. I have hundreds of people looking at me. I'm up on stage, right? My big ego thought, oh, I'm such a badass. So I can take off the next move. You know, I show them as I crawl off stage and go suck wind while all of them have to keep going. <clears throat> and then I start doing these power jumps. He's like, you're going for a minute, Jimmy. So people are out. I see people looking at me and I feel like I have to go so they don't stop. So I start doing these power jumps. And I, I'm just, I'm, I've never been so tired in my life. If you ever get so tired and work so hard that you get this, and maybe I'm the only person, you get this weird tingle in your jaw. It almost feels like you're going to vomit, but it's not quite that. It's this weird, I get this weird numb tingle sensation like in the back of my like, my saliva glands and in my jaw. It, I, I'll be honest, I haven't worked that hard in a long time, but I know when it happens. <clears throat> and so I'm doing these power jumps. Boom, 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 boom. <clears throat> and I literally collapse, right? I literally go to the ground and just, I have to take a break. And all I feel, as you can see, Sean is a very large human being. All I feel is his hand grab me by the back of my tank top and says, you don't stop. And I keep jumping. And somewhere in the middle of this, I hit this weird zone and I start crying. Like I am jumping my tail off. I've never been so exhausted in my life. And I burst into tears. And I can't really explain it. It was just like breaking through of this emotional barrier, breaking through of somebody else setting what I could do higher than what I had told myself. My body said, you're done, Nelson. You are done. And he said, no, you keep going. I know you're further than this. I know you can do more than that. And he literally picked me up and challenged me to keep going. He didn't play to my level. He didn't understand that I was tired. He didn't let me slack because he knew my potential. He knew where I wanted to go with things. He knew that, that he had put me on stage for a reason. And that I, in coming off that stage, I had never been on a higher high, like completely spent. Like completely spent, but in this weird, amazing mental zone. And I'm telling you right now, whatever it is that you're working on, whether it's physically, financially, in your relationships, to get a business off the ground, to launch that, that ebook or that product, or you know whatever it is that you're working on, that you popped in here, you saw entrepreneurial training, you're like, I need to listen to this. You are quitting before the finish line every day. And you're probably quitting before many finish lines within your day. If you go look at your to-do list, and the things you need to knock out of the highest quality every day, you're not doing it. You're going through the motions. One more Shanti story. Um, a couple of years ago, I got to go audition for what they call, uh, it was Master Trainer. It was when they were launching the Insanity Certification. And Sean was going to come in and handpick his very first Insanity Master Trainers. And I hadn't worked out with Sean in a little while. And we did an insan a live Insanity workout, one of the first Insanity Live workouts. And we were in... The punches in the squat, right? Boom, 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 boom. And I was feeling pretty good that day. And so the people around me were on this pace. So I was like, oh, I can match them. And I really wasn't exhausted, just to be really honest with you. I was having a good day. And Sean was at the front, and I'm going the same pace as everybody else in the class. I'm just as low, but I had settled into kind of like cruise control. I'd settled into a good zone where I wasn't really exerting all my energy, but I was like, well, I'm with everybody else, so it's good. And Sean looked me right in the eye from the front of the class and goes, Jimmy, quit being lazy. Go. Because he knew my potential. 
So that's the other thing when you're around other people is when you're around other people and they're doing just enough and you're like, oh, I can match them. I can match them without giving my full effort. Then you cheat yourself. You cheat yourself of your full potential, right? Because some people, some people don't want to show off because they don't want to feel like they are showing off. They don't want to talk about what, what they accomplished because they, they're afraid they're going to make somebody else feel guilty. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's about that individual and that's their own personal development. And that's their mental struggle. People around you need to see you excel. People around you need to see you set the bar really high. And you know why? Because they need to see what's possible. And if they choose to feel bad about themselves because they're not getting the same results or because they're not putting the same fourth amount of effort, that's about them. Don't play down to somebody else to spare their feelings. I'm going to say that again. Somebody please quote me on that one because that one I want to use later. Don't play down to somebody else to spare their feelings. That is not your job. That is not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to play to your level and above. Your job is to play to your level and above to grow you as an individual and to show others what's possible. Right? You've heard the story about the four minute mile. Like, nobody could run it. You know, Roger Bannister, I think was his name. And nobody could run the four minute mile. Nobody could run the four minute mile. And people told him it was impossible. And then once he finally did it, all these people started cranking out the four minute mile like it was nothing. Why? Because one individual chose not to play down to everybody else, showed what was possible, and then everybody else's mindset shifted and goes, oh, I guess that is possible. And then. They all did it because somebody else showed what was possible. So don't play down because, oh, my business partner, you know, feels bad or my team's going to feel bad if I, if I continue to, you know, let's say you're in a, let's say you're in like a, a network marketing situation where you're, you're recruiting customers, you're, you're asking people to join your business. Don't ever, you're like, if you're a really good recruiter and you're recruiting, I don't know, 10 to 20 people a month. But your, your success partner or your team feels guilty or feels bad because they can't match you. Damn it, don't stop. Just say, hey, look, I'll show you. Like, come on. Like, lead by example and show them what's possible. Share with them what you're doing. Because more than likely, it's not that you're just not finishing early. Like, right? You chose to run through the finish line. You chose, good enough wasn't good enough for you. Somewhere along the way, you said, my effort needs to go up. Everybody else hasn't made that decision with you. So, sometimes it's the people closest to you that you expect to support you, don't. And that hurts. I've seen this a lot of times in relationships. One person decides to take control of their health and fitness, right? And they're married or they're in a relationship and instead of being happy for that individual that their spouse is starting to look smoking hot and they have more energy and they have a lot more confidence, they get bitter and resentful, right? I've seen marriages like literally go away because one person decided to take control of their health and fitness. And while the, the end of that marriage or that in the end of that relationship is tragic, would it have been better for the person to play down and just live in a miserable, unhealthy lifestyle so they had a companion, like the companion to be miserable with? I, that's a tough question, but my, my, my gut says no. Specifically, if the spouse is willing to help the other person, like, come do this with me. I want you to do this with me. We talked about this yesterday about sharing the vision with other people, like, in order to get people on your side, like the recognition stuff, right? That sometimes you need to share your vision on why you're doing something with that part, with that business partner, with that spouse, with your team. So that goes back to, you know, cause you'll hear stuff like, Oh, are you just too good for us now? You're trying to make, you're trying to be better. We're not good enough for you. And it's just like, no, that's where I go. I wasn't good enough for me. I was playing small. I deserve better. I deserve good enough is no longer good enough for me. I would love for you to come along with me. I would love for you to come along with me. But regardless if you do or not, I'm not going to lower my standards anymore. 
I get one life, I get one body, I get one time around this planet, you know, on this planet, I'm, I'm ready to play big. I'm ready to play big. And let's, let's come play big with me. Come play big with me. That's my mantra for 2016 is I'm looking for people that want to join my team and work with me. I'm looking for busy people that are already in other businesses that, that want to live a healthier lifestyle. One of my mantras this year is if you're already in a business and you're already an entrepreneur, great. Improve your health and fitness and it's going to improve your bottom, bottom line. <laughs> improve your waistline, improve your bottom line, right? Boom, boom. Healthy body, healthy business. That's who I'm looking for this year, you know? And one of the things that if, you know, I can let you know that if, if, you're, if you're interested in learning how to work with me, I've just opened up a, a four-day sneak peek where people can, over four days I did a video series that shows what I'm doing and where I'm going and the people I'm going with and whether or not you can jump on board. And you can go to joincoachjimmy.com and check it out. And you can find out really passively if that's for you or not. You go to joincoachjimmy.com and check it out. Because we're going places. We're building something big, right? We're building something big and massive. And I need people to help me build this. I need people that are already entrepreneurs, that are already hard workers. I need busy people that don't have time to do this. That's who I need. That's who I need. So if that's you, go to joincoachjimmy.com. See what we're building. See what this amazing movement is all about. And it is about building entrepreneurs. It is about building lives of freedom. It is about impacting others' lives. And how do we start that? We start that by raising the bar for everybody. And that happens within our group. That happens within our team, right? We raise the bar for everyone around us because when we raise the bar, other people are going to raise the bar with us. And there's going to be certain people that just dismiss themselves. It's not the right timing for them and it's not for them right now. And that's okay. No judgment on them, but we're going places and we're raising the bar. And with us raise the bar, that person next to you, that person at your shoulder is going to go, oh, if they can, I can. But you playing safe doesn't serve anybody. You playing safe doesn't serve anyone. I'm excited for 2016. I'm excited for the for what we're building. I'm excited for the the lives we're setting free. I'm I'm excited about playing big, making people uncomfortable, getting out of that comfort zone. Man, that's let's let's sprint out of the comfort zone. Right? Let's sprint out of the comfort zone. And I need you to come along with me. So thank you for taking the time. Good enough isn't good enough. I want to hear from you. Tell me what it is that you're raising the bar in right now in 2016. And I look forward to hearing from you and responding and let's get in this thing together. Until next time, my name is Coach Jimmy. I'll talk to you real soon.